We don't even need to pretend Me and them boys ain't friends We ain't like them Never keep it real in the ends Never leave crib for the ends Me and that kid We don't even need to pretend Me and them boys we ain't friends We ain't like them Never keep it real in the ends Never leave crib for the ends Me and that kid We don't even need to pretend Me and them boys we ain't friends We ain't like them Never keep it real in the ends Never leave crib for the ends Me and that kid we don't even Ned, welcome. Thanks, um, mate. Thank you so much for coming on and chatting today. Uh, you're actually our very first. You're an episode numero uno. Feel very privileged. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's um. So basically, as I've said to you, and I guess for everyone tuning in for the first time, this mm. is a bit of a music industry 101. Awesome. And I just wanted to talk to people that I know personally that have interesting stories, yeah. but have been in the industry mm. doing stuff at a pretty high level for a fair while. Yeah. And um. Like before I even knew you, so this is like a little bit of my background, yeah. you know. And I think I might have told you this. You've before, briefed me on a little bit, but before, before yeah. I knew you personally, yeah. I was a huge fan of your work. Like <laughs> I, I was like, man, this dude is legit. Like everything that you shoot, all of your creative work, your <laughs> campaigns you do, it, it's like you just get it. Like, and I really, yeah. and, and along with obviously like a lot of other people, like yeah. you know, really, um, really get it and, and feel connected to it. So. Um, I think there's so much scope and stuff that we can talk about, mm. um, but I just want uh, just to start off so people know a bit about your background yeah. and who you are and how you've got to this position as both an artist, creator, photographer, yeah. and musician. Yeah. Maybe give us a little bit of a recap of your story. Um, so it's definitely started when I was like my, uh, 20 or so. I was I'm a carpenter by trade, so that was you know you get told by your parents to get a trade, start working, whatever else. And I did that forever and it just it never felt like the right fit. I was always looking for an outlet and DJing became an outlet for me and making music. So this is before Teagues. I felt like I lived this other life before Teagues, my girlfriend. Um, oh yeah, so just uh, Teagues yeah. is also this extremely talented, creative yeah. creator. <laughs> um, and yeah, both of you together, I feel like really just, complement each other. Yeah. So um, we'll do a shout <laughs> out for you at the end of the app and, yeah. <laughs> and tag you guys um, both on, you know, for your Instagram so yeah. everyone can check out your stuff. Definitely. Um, but yeah, sorry, continue. So yeah, started um, DJing when I was about 20 in a bar I was working at. So I'd sort of build houses by day, work in the bar by night, started DJing. Loved it so much that that just started to overtake everything else I was doing. And I started doing nights in Newcastle, where I'm from, um, with a couple other friends. And it just turned into something huge there. Created a whole scene in Newcastle for years. And it was just, um, I mean, it was never going to last, but it was awesome while it did. Um, and then I started, I think that I, again, I felt like I, I started DJing in Sydney. So I was bouncing between Newcastle and Sydney, doing a few nights there and a few nights in Newcastle. Kind of had, then I was subcontracting sub as a builder. So I kind of had that on the back burner and DJing. Had, that's hectic. You're doing really super late nights DJing because yeah. like what time are you wrapping up? Like two, three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, sometimes later. And I, I would just literally pull all Holy nighters, shit. a couple of Red Bulls straight to the work site with a you know a change of clothes in my in my ute on go to the work site. Um, I mean, I had youth on my side, so that was kind of the way I'd balance both ends of the spectrum there. But eventually music did kind of take over and I hung up the tool belt for a couple of years there and I was just running a night in Newcastle, a small one in Sydney, and then I was DJing in both cities and I've just become obsessed. That was my new obsession was to do everything DJing. I had my setup at home and I was, I just put all my energy and focus into being the best DJ and making, having all these, you know, like sort of creating all these little edits, I'd play in my sets and just wanted to be that for so long. And then I think it started to taper off a little bit because I felt like you get to this point in this industry where it's like, I, I try and explain it like, sometimes it feels like crabs in a bucket. Everyone, <laughs> everyone's clawing to the top, you know, and then you yeah, have man. to become undeniable so everyone goes he's done it you know it's kind of like one of those everyone just fights everyone to get to the top and I felt like I was there hanging around the top and you just kind of get pulled down all the time or you hit a plateau and you lose a bit of wind out of your sail so oh like I, yeah. I I've experienced that so much in the industry because yeah. 
and and there's so much more competitiveness yeah. in the low to middle tier. Yeah. And artists are like they're cutthroat. Everyone's kind of yeah. like talking shit about everyone. Oh, that's, it's yeah. it's really super competitive. But then when you get to that level where you've like you've made it or you've had yeah. that breakthrough, everyone's super chill and lovely because you don't really have that's anything that, to prove anymore. Yeah, that's that that's that big leap. That's when you become undeniable and people go, he's done it. But when you're in that middle ground, it's just every man for himself and it feels tough to, it just feels like a constant battle. And I, I was just struggling with that a little bit and I decided to do a bit of traveling because I loved traveling in my, sort of when I was 18, I went sort of traveling a little bit. Decided to pick up on that when I was 25 or 26. I bought a one way to Canada to work over in Canada start something new because I was just sick of battling this industry. Went there and then kind of started, something, started something new over there again. I like started a night, started DJing at clubs and bars and then just a bit of building on the side that kind of was my bread and butter just to pay the bills. And the, again, it, what I loved about traveling, it made me realize um, like how much I loved, how I loved music and I wasn't just going to throw it away. I met so many amazing people over in Canada, like big people that it's weird, all these people that I'd have, I'd flick through my CD wallet and all these artists that I would play every night in Newcastle. Yeah. I was meeting all these people in Canada. Yeah, it was so, trip, hey? It was so trippy. And I didn't realise this at the time, but travelling and DJing overseas gives you this weird little like street cred back home. Everyone thinks you're kind of- Totally, yeah. You, you've made something yeah. of yourself because you're doing it outside of Australia. Yeah. So I felt like I, I didn't even know, really know it, but I, um, I was playing and doing my thing over in, in Canada. I moved to Berlin, I'm doing the same thing in Berlin. I went, to, I went there for a year, same thing, played as much as I could at all the bars, bit of building on the side. And then I want to come back to Australia after about four years it, I didn't, it, it felt like people were treating me like, oh, he's, a, he's this artist. You're an international or star. Yeah, that's what yeah. it felt like a little yeah, bit. And totally. I, I never... I never um, Not like a, just a dude from Newcastle that's a chippy on the side. Literally. And, yeah. and I, I never thought of it that way until I got home. I was like, oh, shit, people actually think of... And it, I always felt like I had this... In, it was an imposter syndrome in a way, but I had done a lot of things and accomplished a lot of things. It was just hard to recognise it from your own perspective, I think sometimes, because you're only totally. your own worst critic, right? So, Well, I mean, I think something that most artists that I know deal mm. with is that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Where, you know, no matter how established you are or successful you are, yeah. there's always this thing in the back of your mind because mm. you know how you got there. You yeah. know what you had to do to get to the point where you yeah. are now. And you always kind of look back and those memories can, mm. can make you feel like you don't deserve what you have now or... Yeah. I think it's there's no real checklist i feel like it's a uh, it's all based on feel there's no instruction booklet oh this is how you get big this is how you get famous you just follow the light wherever it leads you and you don't realize you're ticking boxes along the way and when you look back at your catalog of things your achievements you've done you're like oh shit i have done that i have done that yeah, that's where i am true. now you know it kind of like you're, you're you're building your own catalog of achievements without even realizing it a lot of the times. And if, I just, if you like yeah. can look back now and I guess reflect on your career, what mm. are some of those check boxes that you think you like most artists need to like achieve mm. before they can get to the next level? I think building a night was always fun. I'd, I just loved doing that. I was always a bit of a socialite. I love getting people together. I love playing music. And I think also another, I don't know, tick box was making my own music and playing it in a club and and getting crazy reactions from that that was just yeah to, i just love that so, so much that, that, that testing that live testing absolutely it just yeah. there's nothing uh sometimes nothing compares that i just love playing my own stuff and and people reacting um getting releases as well and like you know it's sometimes it feel, it looked like a small thing but it feels so huge inside just getting anything released yeah on a public scale. Um, I think traveling too, and like, I don't see it because I do it so much. I don't see it as a huge achievement, but going to different countries and experiencing different cultures and, and 
just immersing yourself in that world, I think is a, a huge tick off anyone's box, you know, just yep. to be able to get outside your own bubble and see everything else is just a, a life achievement really. So. Oh, totally. So it, it definitely gives you perspective. I remember yeah. the first time I went on a tour like internationally, it was, it was crazy because yeah. I, the, it opened my eyes to so many different styles of music, mm. different genres. Yeah. I remember just going into my first club, like proper club yeah. scene in Berlin. Yeah, wow. And had a bit of a, you know, a wild night. Yeah, And yeah. came out like after the weekend just loving electronic music. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, like that perspective of traveling, it's, mm. it's crazy. Um, one thing, I'd, I'd, and this is like, I think you'd have an interesting perspective and I, I, would, I would think that you probably just do this effortlessly. Mm. And this is probably a really hard thing that most artists struggle with. Mm. But because you're such a like creative, you know, content driven person, mm you know, like that, your, the perspective of who you are visually and creatively from the outside world. Yeah. I think that has such a huge impact on, you know, how, you know, people finding you or like maybe yeah. people like following you on social media Absolutely, or yeah. even giving your music a chance is that first visual glance. Yeah. Uh, and you just do it. That's who you are. Like yeah. you're just like a walking, yeah. you know, fucking cool dude. So it's, <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's easy, you know, like, it's like, I just, um, Everything, every post you put up, everything that you do with your image and your branding is so on point. Oh, thanks, man. But, like, was that something that just always came easy to you? Um, growing up, I felt um, it felt a little bit difficult because I definitely was the one that would dress a little left of, like, the rest of my friends. The rest of my friends are straight down the line. They're wearing this. They're wearing the white DC shoes. And they're wearing the, the perfect billabong jeans. But I'd start wearing like skinny blacks and I'd just get murdered for it or I'd wear like... <laughs> I mean, uh, I have that shirt in green, so yeah, it's, yeah. Fine. It's, it's all good. It's like <laughs> but like just, I'd always, I'm the one that was always wearing something a little sort of a left of centre. And I remember even thinking, I'd buy stuff going, I love this, I want to wear it. I know my friends will burn me. You know, there'd be stuff I'd, I'd keep at home and I'd, I'd buy it and I'd be like, oh, maybe I won't. I mean, I'll have a pair of shoes, I'd put it back under the... The, the bed just waiting for the perfect time to wear a really wild pair of shoes or something like that. I've always just dressed out there. I love yeah. dressing. I loved even more so now the age I am. I've, I've reached that age where I just don't care anymore. And yeah. I just I want to. I, I, I feel like that's me. so important though. Like yeah. you know because and this is like this is me talking yeah. out of experience. Like yeah. I am so not. Like, I just don't give a fuck about style. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I just, it's never something that's been, like, at the forefront of my mind. Yeah. But in the creative industry, you you need to be extra. You need to put mm. yourself out there so much more because otherwise you just yeah. kind of fall into the, into the like, the, the crowd. And it's, yeah. it's really difficult for a lot of people to just push themselves out of their comfort zone think, in what they wear, creative taste, mm. styling. Like, how do you, like, because I, I, so this is, something you did a shoot for um, Boo Seeker yeah. for, for Benny. Yeah. And I, I was on that shoot. We were up in Cairns, I yeah. think. And you were able to really push him out of his comfort zone. Yeah. And we got like, I, I think, some of the most amazing shots That's that awesome. he's ever done. Yeah. And even when we were talking to like, you know, PR and, yeah. you know, Spotify. <laughs> and Because we got a couple of Spotify covers out of that. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, w it really made a difference. Yeah. And like, so how do you get, people to get out of that comfort zone um, and what, what advice would you give to like other artists that are trying to like brand themselves but don't feel comfortable maybe you know wearing out there kind of you know yeah. clothes and outfits it's definitely going to come natural I think you can see someone forcing something you know like um, there's just people that will be like oh I've got to wear the best Subi shirt and I'm going to wear this because everyone else does and they'll see me in this light if it doesn't feel natural it's going to definitely not look that natural you got to be into what you're wearing because I feel like you give off that energy. Um, I think um, like when I was on the shoot with Benny, I felt like I could see he wanted to, He could he, because of his position and who he is, he could be absolutely anything. If he wanted to wear a garbage bag and cowboy boots, he would make it look cool if he was confident about it, you know, like yeah. he, because he's got that rock star, being a rock rock star, I feel like it comes with like you, it gives you a free pass into 
being anything you want. Yeah, so and you I've, can do anything stylistically. It doesn't really matter. There's no boundaries. Literally. And I feel like he can lean into that. And I was just trying to push him into that going, hey, it doesn't matter what you wear. You're a rock, you're an international rock star. Like be anything you want. No one's going to critique you. Everyone's going to go, oh, that guy's sick. Like the further, the, the further you go left, the more people will probably follow you. The more, you. the more interest you'll get, the more eyes you'll get on you. If you start to blend in the background and you don't want to wear anything too crazy, you do become a little bit forgettable in a way. Everyone's always going to look at someone wearing a bloody a kilt and a mesh crop top versus someone who's just dressed in sort of all beige, standing in the corner. Blue jeans and, and beige. Yeah. And beige. <laughs> 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 I was trying to avoid the word. <laughs> I was yeah, tell, tell me what you really think. It's white. Do, it's do, white. It's, it's white. white. Yeah, sure. Um, but, but, like, like, well, but how do you then, like, so I totally agree, but, like, even knowing Benny, like, he doesn't consider himself a rock star. And a lot of musicians don't, you know, even when they're at yeah. that position, they don't have that self-confidence. So, like, it's a really interesting thought to, like, how do you get that, self, like, self-confidence? I think it's, um, well, again, he probably also has a, imposter syndrome idea in his head too. You know, he's much bigger than what he thinks he is. I think everyone suffers from that in that totally. industry who has some sort of success. Um, I think, I, I feel like it's also come with age a little bit. I'm, I'm leaning more into what or how I want to dress and I'm caring less about what people think of me. Especially in the last 10 years, I felt like I'm just, I've always worn what I want to wear, like, and I'll go, pretty far left and I sometimes like the criticism. I get energy off the, the negativity sometimes. <laughs> the people people don't like what I wear, so I'll wear something more extra. That's that, awesome. That I love that. If you bounce off that a bit more yeah. as well. I, sometimes I try and turn it I turn it into a positive. Like you don't like the skirt I'm wearing, I'm gonna wear a shorter skirt and I'm gonna wear bloody knee high boots the next time. You know, like I'll just yeah. really push the limits. I think and then it gives you a little bit of room to move. If you go really, really left and you wear it with confidence and it's consistent, people just start to think, oh, that's... That's who you are. That's who I am. You know, so you, you just know, need to own it. Basically. You just need to own it, essentially. Yeah. You're not wearing... Um, you don't just go on one... You don't go out one day and you wear something crazy and then you wear pyjamas for the rest of your life. You know, like you need to... If there's consistency there, yeah. people need time to adjust... Um, to your, to your new look, I guess, in a way. Everyone has a bit of a change. I feel like I always change my style too, but it's always very left to center, so. How, how do you, have you, have you, have you gotten much hate? Have you ever gotten like a lot of hate on like social media and- Always, you know, Always, yeah. okay, so that's really interesting. So because you've mm. got like a lot of followers, how do you, like from a headspace, how do you deal with that energy? Um, well, obviously everyone's different. I think, um, again, I, th I think it honestly comes with age. I think I just care less about what gets said online. Like, um, I, it, I, you know what, I feel like it also stems from um, the worksite banter. Like, obviously I would cop it on the worksite, but I was good at my job and like I could do anything or whatever else. But, you know, I, back in the day I had long hair in a ponytail or something. And I would just cop it all day, but I knew how to sort of answer back and just shut them down. I think I just got used to that banter. And growing up too with um, like my crew from Newcastle, it was just all about sledging each other. We'd stand in the middle of the kitchen at a party and just like just tear shreds off everyone. What's changed there? Like, yeah, it's not like, much yeah nothing's changed. So that's, yeah, that's kind that's, of when you grow up in that kind of atmosphere, that kind of surrounding, I feel like you get used to the, you know how to handle the, the negativity in a way. I just eight mile them, you know, if they, you know, they, they say I kissed a guy, I'll tell them I had an orgy with three guys. You know, like I, it, <laughs> yeah. So they've got nothing to come back on you. You just yeah. become bulletproof in a way. So yeah, it's just, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, what, what's, I guess, one thing in like, in both, because obviously like as, as a musician, like DJ, mm. um, you know, creator, but also like content creator, like, you know, doing what you do for a living with Teagues, um, what's the, what's the thing that you wish you knew before you kind of got into this lifestyle or what's, what do you think is a, a really big misconception about our lifestyle that a lot of people from the outside looking in don't really understand? People think we don't work. We just sit at home and we just take a photo and put it up online. Um, or just, 
it like we obviously give the impression that our lifestyle is jet skis, champagne and doing nothing and partying and this and this, but there is so much work that leads up to that 30 minutes of fun here or there or whatever else. We're just, and I guess we want this lifestyle to work so much because it beats building houses or working in retail or wherever it is. And I just love what we do and I'll do anything to make it work, which means it's not eight hours. It's like, I, I still get in trouble now. Like me, I start at nine o'clock and I go to bed at two every night because I love what I do so much and I'll jam everything I can do in one day, every single day. Weekends do just mold into the week for me. Like we all, Teagues and I just, all we do is just make content. How can we do the next thing? How can we get this going? Let's start a new project. Let's do prints. Let's do that. We're always, that entrepreneur, entrepreneurial energy is kind of what we've been chasing and we want to keep around because I feel like it just drives us to to live our best lives. You know? that, that's like, awesome. And you know what? Like I think we're like in this weird new kind of like twilight age in the mm. music industry and the creative industry where all of these jobs have melded into one. Uh -huh. Like if you want to be, you, you can't anymore, like as an artist or a musician, yeah. you can't just be good at music. Yeah. Which is Literally. like, it's a trip for people to, to start getting into this different headspace. Because yeah. now as a musician, you're also a content creator. Yeah. You're doing a podcast. You're, mm. um, you know, you're, you're out socializing. Like it's- Got to be the know, jack of all. I, I had this like, <laughs> crazy revelation because you know i was like mixing and, and engineering and producing for so long yeah and just never getting like the the kind of the bigger clients through yeah and then i started working you know with some some of the major labels and like yeah. seeing going to a couple of parties mm. and started working with some guys in the industry that were not very good like yeah. they were not amazing producers engineers or mixers yeah but they were always getting these gigs they were always getting like the the bigger doing everything and yeah. i was like why what the hell is going on yeah and i realized it was because they had the the full 360 game going yeah they weren't just like spending all of their time being awesome yeah at the the creative and you know um mm. you know producing and engineering side yeah they were going out and hanging out with like the the kind of the the key people in the industry they mm. were like going to parties they were like building relationships they were yeah. working on their own like content they were mm. releasing like little how-to videos or yeah you know, and it's like it's fatiguing it and is. it's I, I really feel sorry for artists these days because it's so much more intense it is yeah there's just you just you're constantly constantly inventing how you can make your brand bigger in every direction. It's not about, I just need to be good at this. You just have to be, that's why I think in the last five years, definitely in the last five years, videos became major for me and it never was before. I never saw myself doing video. Um, photos, yeah, I always had a bit of a knack for it. Most people do pick that up, but video we started I started just mucking around with travel videos. They're horrible, that little GoPro videos or whatever, but always loved doing something different, chopped up and whatever else, and got right into that. Then I think the Jagger Girls gave me a shot at a campaign video, worked it really well, and the rest is kind of just blossomed out of that. No way. So it was Lucy and Nikki that kind of like... They gave me uh, my first... We, I've done it. I did a couple of travel videos, pretty basic. Yeah. But they are like, we want a really edgy campaign video, are you keen? And I said, you know, look, that's lock awesome. Me in, so, and you know what? That's that's so like just to, to talk about that for a second. It's like sometimes the people that you meet along this journey, mm. you don't even realize the impact that they're going to have in your career. Yeah, exactly. And you you have to, and all of a sudden you kind of like you blink and you're in this like yeah. crazy new circle of friends that have like, influence yeah. and yeah. they can really help push your career along. Yeah, and it's like. You just have to always be looking out. And, and again, it's it's not you're not looking out for an opportunity, mm. but it's these opportunities do come, come up, when yeah. you put yourself out there, right? Yeah. That's that's 
I mean, I, I didn't know you like four years ago, and now I've got like your print yeah. behind me in my, in my house. So it's like, it's, it's wild to think yeah. how like one chance to encounter or like go, pushing yourself and going, I don't want to go out tonight because I've had a huge week. But then you go out to a party or you mm. go to an after party and you network and you become friends with someone and yeah. how much that can just splinter off into like amazing things creatively for you and your career. I was the biggest believer in that. Um, I think that's why I enjoyed socializing so much and organizing parties because I felt like there were so many great ideas and brands and just things built out of nights, people meeting people and things blossoming out of that. I, I loved that so much and I felt like I met so many people along the way through that making connections to play this gig or do that or shoot that photo all through just socializing and that's always been a... That's, a, that's why I always loved, that's why I was so obsessed with parties, I think, too, was the fact that all the new people I got to meet and, you know, if they were going to be a friend or if they were like, yeah, you can do this for me or what, you know, it was just, it felt so fun to, it was like a new night every time you go out because you knew you were going to meet someone new and it was always going to be something come out of it anyway. And going back to what you just said before about, um, like, the like the, the, that consistent branding and building your brand. Yeah. Like from a creative perspective for artists, mm. can you give like, you know, like say you're like, say like there's a, like a budding up and coming, you know, you know, engineer, producer, or yeah. even like an artist or a DJ or mm. even someone in the creative industry. Mm. Um, what are some practical steps that you can take like today to start building your brand in like a meaningful way? I think, Putting yourself out there and, and not being scared to fail because if the worst thing is, if you're going to, everyone, fail, I fail at a lot of things I do all the time, but it's the only way you can get any better at literally anything. Put, putting yourself out there is honestly the best advice that I think most people give because if you sit there and you just talk about, you just like, oh, I love this song or I love this photo, I'm not sure, I might not worry about it, put it to the side. No one will ever see it, no one will ever know it existed, you won't know whether it could have been in a magazine, it could have been on this label, it could have been anything if you just put it out there and let other people see what you're doing. Yeah, totally. You can't be scared to fail because failing, it, it's not, it's not, as bad as what everyone thinks it is, you know? I think that's, I've always just attacked everything. I've, sometimes I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. I'm just like video, photos, whatever else. I'm like, I also have those little moments where I feel like, how did I get here? Why am I doing this? Oh, maybe I'll do it this way, I'm not sure. And you slowly start to figure out a pathway in sort of any profession that you're doing, you know? It's just kinda, it's funny how it kind of, you, you can spin it. I've always, actually, when I, was in, when I was living in Berlin, I felt like it spawned from there. Living in Berlin for a year and I had to make every, anything work. So if someone said, hey, we need um, some furniture built down in the sushi shop and I knew I could probably do it, I mean, need some plumbing done. Oh yeah, I could probably do that. And I would just go to this place, I'd build this, chair, I'd build that. They're like, can you install this toilet? Not sure how to do it. I'd go down to the um, local internet cafe, look up how to install this particular toilet, watch it on YouTube, go back, install this toilet. You know, like when, my, when your back's against the wall, you can literally make anything happen. When, it, when you have to make it happen, it, you'll just, you'll find a way. I love that. And it just, that's, that's, that's super, like I reckon that hustle mentality. Yeah. It's what, if you don't have that in this industry, especially oh. now, you're absolutely, you're stuffed. Eh? Yeah. Like there's nothing that is, because a lot of the time, again, like the thing that I noticed that separates mm. mediocre art artists across the board from like those that are like killing it and being successful yeah. are the ones that are just willing to do what it takes yeah. to get themselves out there. Yeah. And it's really counterintuitive for a lot of us. Like yeah. I hate promoting myself. Like yeah. I hate it. Like if mm. I'm in an Uber with someone and like me and Jay, we're like cruising. They're like we yeah. do it all the time when we're in LA. Yeah. If someone says, you know, what do you do? Yeah, I'm not gonna say what I do. Like I'll make up a story. I'll I don't be know like, why I'm you gonna... do that. You're so good at what you do. Nah, uh, but I like <laughs> I hate it. I hate talking about it. Like yeah. I'll be like, man, I, I like say like I'm an accountant, or I, you know, like I'll, I just I hate. What do you do? <laughs> I don't I don't know. But it's like I I feel like a lot of artists 
have that thing where yeah. they just don't like, they don't feel comfortable hyping themselves up mm. because it's it just feels unnatural and it feels like any kind of self promotion. Yeah, it just doesn't come naturally to me. But the yeah. one the artists that I work with that are hugely successful, yeah, they have no problem with it. Yeah, and, okay. I, and I sometimes I go, man, I wish I had some of your confidence. Yeah, yeah, because then it would just be easy. But it's a really it's a struggle. I think it all like for me, it almost comes back to I, I just do not want to be building houses anymore. I do not want to be a carpenter anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I love what I do. It's, a, it's and fear. I'm, you don't want to go back to that lifestyle. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. just, I'm scared to death of going back there. So I, I love what I do and I, that's why I love telling people what I do and I do this and I do that and I love doing this. And I, it's almost not like a, I'm not sitting there plugging myself, but I'm telling people what I love doing and I'm showing them work yeah. and what I did. And, and there's a difference, hey? And, so it might come across as look at me, look at me. I'm more like just like I'm stoked that I made this and look what I made. You know, like it's kind of yeah. that energy in a way. It's yeah, a bit I, more, I, I think so. Yeah. And I think also going back to, you know, our, the networks that we were saying you, yeah. know, you become part of. Yeah. Uh, if you're really good at what you do mm. and you are like genuinely excited about everything you're doing in your life. Yeah. People get that buzz and yeah. they catch on and yeah. then they start promoting you. Yeah. Like people, like I'm always talking about you and yeah. like Maddie and like all of my creative mates yeah. that are like so like every, everyone that's mm. in my network, yeah. I am like everyone's biggest, you know, hype man. Yeah. You know, and, and awesome. I think I think that's how it, yeah. it should work. Like yeah. everyone, that's the thing I love about the music industry mm. and especially like our circle that we have yeah. here in Australia. Everyone really wants to see everyone else do well. Yeah. Everyone backs each other yeah. and if there's an opportunity to like, you know, give someone like a, a bit of a prop, yeah, you know, no problem. Everyone's usually on board for that. So I feel like the ever since moving to the Gold Coast, I feel like the Gold Coast is like that more than anywhere else where we've been. Like I've only ever lived in Sydney and Newcastle. It feels a bit more like I was saying, going back to crabs in a bucket. It feels more like that down there. Up here ever since the day we moved up here, it has this um, positive feel. Everyone does want to see you succeed at what you do. You know, everyone wants to help you and Benny needs vocals, uh, I need a model for a photo. Like, it's like, I feel everyone wants to help everyone up here and that's what I absolutely adore Gold Coast for. It's yeah. just, that was probably the best movie we ever made and I went back home just recently and I, it felt like I was reminded of why why I left there too. Like I love the place, but yeah. sometimes it can be a bit difficult in your own hometown. I feel like this. It's always fine. It yeah. you know, like in your own hometown, usually people they you know, even if you're massively successful yeah. because they know you, yeah, and because they've got history. Yeah, you're just like Ned from around the corner. Yeah, you know, you're just like you're, not, you're Ned the chippy. Yeah, you know, you're not Ned the like you know the amazing musician DJ. Yeah you know, photographer, videographer, yeah. creative, you know, genius. It's yeah. like you, you kind of, it's hard to shake, you know, yeah, that know. whole thing, right? I think all of my old friends are still waiting for me to wear something that's playing. Like <laughs> they, they keep thinking, oh, it's just a, just a phase, but it's been a phase for 20 years. Yeah, you know, right. Like, one of those things. But, yeah, that's awesome. Well, but, um, um, it'd be really cool for you to like, you tell me what you kind of, what you've got coming up as well. Like, because... I know you're playing uh, a little sneaky show for New Year's Eve. Um, yeah, that like, one. Yeah, so so what have you been, been doing live lately and what, what's kind of like, what's happening for you in the new year? Um, and also how are you going to like, what are you going to be doing in the new year to kind of like push yourself further as an artist? So this year has been a bit of, like everyone, a bit of self-discovery coming out of the back end of COVID and what what we all do after that. And I think... We're back to doing the full-time travel video stuff for a lot of travel companies, um, which is awesome. I feel like works better than ever since we've come back because we've, over the past two years, it felt like nothing was happening. We kept consistent with, with content, brands still know we exist, and we come out of that with more skills, better knowledge, and all the jobs ready to go. Music-wise, um, Music for me, I've obviously started to pick back up in the last two years, and especially in the last six months, I'm pushing it a lot more. Um, working on a lot of original stuff, um, trying to play more shows, just trying to really get out there. So 2023 for me, I just want to be able to, I want to be 
book to play a festival. I want, I want, you know, I want those regular things coming in. Right now, I feel like I'm chasing a little bit. Kind of feels like the way I felt when I was 25. I'm chasing these things and trying to get this, trying to get that. But I also feel like putting out some new music is going to open up doors, like you said. You can't just be good at one thing. You kind of got to be yep. music and this and whatever else. Actually, it goes back to what I, this conversation I missed a bit earlier. Um, in my 20s, starting to DJ, I put all my energy into becoming, all I wanted to do was be the best DJ in Newcastle. I didn't care about making music or whatever else. I did edits and whatever else. I had four CDJs set up and I would just practice four hours a day, every single day, because I just wanted to be that guy that could play four CDJs and just be bang, bang, you know, you pull out your CDs and you're in and out and got acapellas on this one and whatever else, I'm scratching on that one. Loved being that guy that could do absolutely everything, but I do regret putting all my energy into that pocket when I could have been working on music and doing this and doing that. But I mean, hindsight's a beautiful thing though, so. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like it takes a lot of time. You know, there's some artists that I work with that just seem to have this um, like sixth sense on yeah. what they need to do, the yeah. skills that they need to sharpen. Yeah. And a lot of it just comes naturally, yeah. right? It's just a really natural progression. But yeah. also for a lot of other artists, it's like, you're just like throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. And yeah. that can be a really long process. Yeah, that's exactly what it is essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like going forward, like what are some of the things that you're going to do like from a creative point of view to like, um, you know, help you get like some, like maybe some more shows, like what are you going to do for like awareness for this project? Because I've heard some of your new music. I actually yeah. did some work on it you on did. the weekend and you it's, did, it's yeah. sick. It's yeah. so good. So, um, like, how are you going to get, like, people to start, like, I guess, because obviously you're known more predominantly now for, like, your creative, your artistic work, all of your mm, prints. Yeah. Um, how are you going to, like, shift that focus in 2023? I think definitely just putting out some music, having s stuff on spot. I think that's the first question anyone asks me. Is you got any, any music on Spotify? And I just, I just don't because I don't have anything released yet. I think releasing music is the first step for me. I feel like I've got all the other angles covered as far as content goes. If I need to make a music video, I can do that. I can do, I can do all the other things. It's just I need that musical component out so I've got something to push and promote and yep. build content off. That's my only thing I need right now. That's my biggest focus is to make more music and get some original music released and then I think people take me a bit more serious too because I think there's some people who have this perce perception of me that I'm this Instagram guy that's trying to be a DJ, but they don't know I've been DJing for... Way longer. Almost 20 years, yeah. you know, like I've been... Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. how do you shift up that perception? I mean, I know you just, um, you just signed to a label, right? So... L yeah, Lucky Entertainment. Lucky agency, Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. And so, so how's on. that kind of changed? Um, are they like driving a lot more of the strategy for you or are they, yeah. what, what, what's their kind of role in this process? I think because I, I'm just so busy with a million other things, they take, a, they take a lot on by chasing shows and booking and talking numbers, which sometimes can be awkward when you're asking people how much and whatever else. And they do all that kind of stuff. And I think the guy that's looking after me, Dylan, I think he just believes believes in me, which is kind of, nice to know like he knows that I can go a whole lot further and I just need to prove that to him basically just get yeah, some music that's, out that's there awesome. but it's going back to that like that's I just picked up on that whole the whole money thing yeah as a creative is that something you've always struggled with like yeah. you're trying to like have those conversations about yeah. what you're worth whether it's like a print or whether it's like a shoot or whether it's like doing mm. a set you know, like at 2 a.m.? Yeah. Well, I think all creators just bounce off each other because we don't, we all don't know. And I think probably the, <laughs> that's, one of that's the- That's really, it's so true, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like- No one knows what, like what, what's the standard pay rate. Yeah, you know? I'll, I'll ask my, you know, three or four photographer friends, my, you know, my best friend, Troy, that lives with us, he's a photographer. I'll ask him, what do you charge for this? Or Carlene, our other friend, photographer, yeah. what do you charge for that? You know, like I'll just- I'll bounce ideas till I get like a rough idea. And then the other agency I'm with, Chic Management in Sydney, they obviously have a structured price plan. So I kind of get 
their idea and I'll find somewhere in the middle and, you know, that'll be my price. But it's always, a f- it's a bit easier with Sheik because I think they, I give them a price and then that's it until I decide that it needs to be different, you know. So not the numbers thing and like the pricing thing has come a little easier with being, being, ag- with being on agencies, I think. That's the only way I get by, I think. Otherwise, yeah, right. I'd still be battling, you know, like a, do, trying do, to do it yourself. Do you think that's like a really, I mean, I think it's a common struggle mm. amongst, you know, people in the creative industry is yeah. um, prescribing like or ascribing a, a dollar value to yeah. what they do. Yeah. Because like you said, like a lot of people think that people in, the, in this industry, they don't really work. Yeah. So, you know, like they don't understand the amount of time and effort yeah. that goes in. And I mean, I've, I've been on tour with you guys. I've, I've, I've seen, you know, you know, we were up at that, um, at the Crisis Green yeah, Festival Kins, and it yeah. was, it was a, that the whole weekend was yeah. like a wild party. Yeah. But you were just locking, you'd go and do a shoot and then lock yourself yeah. in the hotel room with your laptop doing just edits. Done. Yeah. And people don't see don't. the amount of work that goes in. Yeah. So it's like then trying to have to explain that to someone and go, yeah. oh fuck, like how do we, how do we justify the spend on this? Because yeah. it's, everyone just has to live. You know? Yeah, how do you, you can't, I can never give someone how many hours I've worked on something because I just don't know. It's not like clocking on it at, at an office job and clocking off. You just, I'll, do you count working as, you know, I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about the job for three hours before I go to sleep, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm always thinking about what I do, but I, I love what I do. So sometimes I don't see it as work and because I've done physical work for 15, 20 years building, to me that is work that I can, I know, I can, I can see in a start and a stop, but with what we do and if you love it so much, I mean, is it really work? You know, you just... Is, well, that's the hard thing, right? How because do you, 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 I think that's where a little bit of the guilt sets in because yeah. I sometimes, and I've done this in the past, mm. I will do a project and I'm just so in love with it mm. that... I don't even need payment. Yeah. Like, and then it, when it comes time to like invoicing, I'm like, oh, how do I? Yeah. I had so much fun. Like yeah. I had a lot of fun doing this. Like I yeah. feel like kind of bad that I'm shooting this yeah. like pretty massive invoice off. <laughs> yeah. And but it's that's part of the problem, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just don't know how to. Yeah. I don't know how to put a dollar value to what I do when I love it so much. If I loved shooting someone, how did it? I mean, how do I? charge them for that you know i just yeah i just want to do it because i enjoy doing it yeah sometimes. yeah i'd yeah. make the worst businessman if i was just doing it by myself i'm glad like agencies take on that role teagues is pretty good at that stuff she's good at numbers she knows how to charge and that kind of thing but i'm also like i feel like i always i never want to charge anyone anything i want everyone to get in for free i want i don't want to i want to do everything for everyone for free that i mean that just that's me as a horrible businessman approach right? <laughs> totally yeah like i get it like yeah. I, I i get so much enjoyment out of that as well yeah. and it's i think that's also there's part of that though don't you think that when you're starting you you kind of have to you know just put yourself out there you have to do the free gigs you have yeah. to there, there's a long there's that long road before yeah. you get to the point where you're you yeah. have like okay this is how much i charge this is what i'm worth mm. it takes time and i think that's one of the hardest thing for yeah. a lot of people starting out yeah you know too. like a lot of musicians they just they're like when when's the, when do i cross that threshold of yeah. now i charge for my time yeah yeah or now i get paid you know proportionately yeah it's, it's, it's weird hey it is weird yeah i mean i and like i we're talking about before i think you can just base it off other creators. It will, it will just always be that way. I, I can't see it. I mean, maybe that's another angle that creators have got to be. They've got to be a great businessman as well. You know, that's another thing they've got to. I absolutely to like. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to be chatting like part of this like series. Um, I've got a couple of mates that are um, in the entertainment law. Oh wow! And you know, like contracts and like you know, you know, like booking fees and mm. like you know, reading the fine print and being really good at doing your books and understanding as an artist how to pay tax yeah. on time. Like these yeah. are like real issues that every creative person faces Everyone because battles. we're not predisposed to that way of thinking. Yeah, out of the box. yeah, exactly. And that's the stuff that can really like dampen ruin you. your flow. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, I, I just, I was interested in your take like with social media because it's changing mm. so much, right? Like TikTok has just 
kind of come yeah. out of nowhere in the last, like, you know, specifically, mm. like, especially like year and a half, two years. Yeah. Where do you kind of see the trends going for like content creators and for artists on these platforms? I think these platforms also don't even know. I think they take, um, they look at all the data and they kind of guess what's the next thing because you always see things pop up. Instagram Reels are now pushing three to six, three to six second Reels. Use this song, do a three second video, or TikTok will be TikTok do the same thing. People put up videos with lots of text over it because that's the trending thing and that's how you get pushed up in the algorithm. People are constantly trying to crack the code, especially TikTok, because I think TikTok's a bit more random. How to get famous quick. And everyone, there's always, everyone's got their own take on it, but no one will ever know how to push that. I think- Have you found consistency? Have you found any kind of like, you yeah, know, like I, thing that's worked specifically well, rel think, reliably well for you when you're pushing content? Yeah, I think vi I think video, but then only, only just the other day, I, I thought reels for Instagram, TikTok videos, video was getting pushed, but then lately I've been putting up photos again, like a carousel of photos, and they'll get crazy likes. So I just don't, I don't really know what they're trying to push at all. <laughs> to be honest, I, it's yeah. just everyone's trying to figure out how to, what to push. I think video personally, I think that's, they've been saying that for the last couple of years that that's the direction they're going in. People are still trying to find other angles and everyone wants to have the, want, know the next move before it happens, but just no one, no one can figure it out, so. Yeah, and because uh, the other thing is as well, like so many like artists spent so much time you know, like in the last five years, building their Instagram yeah. and building that up to the point where that was their main kind of connection point with yeah. fans. And now it's kind of like, you know, started trending towards TikTok. But is, yeah. I just saw something in the news the other day that the US have like drafted a new bill across both like bipartisan bill to look at banning TikTok in America. Get out. Yeah. And I think it's, it's like too so, big. I don't think, think it'll ever big? happen. Yeah. I yeah. think it'll stay or there'll be another there'll be another social, there'll be another one like um, TikTok that comes out that overtakes it. TikTok yeah. could, I just don't think TikTok will go anywhere, but I think it'll turn into But like, the content won't really change though, right? It's like, it's always gonna be similar styles of content, like short, engaging, yeah. you know, pieces that like draw people in. Yeah, and they'll our, just our be- our attention spans are like absolutely oh, ridiculous now, right? Yeah, like, I mean, I feel like when I play in a club, I don't play a song longer than a minute now because I can see everyone waiting for the next song. It's just sort of turned into that. You really? But it's yeah. only in some spots. I mean, yeah. other places, I mean, if you're in somewhere in, a, in Berlin, you're playing an eight minute track and everyone will want to listen to every, every beat. Yeah. But um, I think video will also turn into people will be doing their own music. So it won't be trending songs. That, um, people kind of already are. They're doing mashups and then you're waiting for them to trend. But people will be making their own original music, their own video. They'll be your your own stylist, your own makeup artist. You're shooting it all. You're editing it all in in Premiere Pro. You you know yeah. you're doing absolutely every everything now, and you're becoming the full package. And you're putting out your three second video to get a like. You know it's just that's what Wild. it's turning into now. Yeah. And it is again we go we go back on like people not seeing how much work goes into something like a three second video. Like I'll spend sometimes up to a full day trying to piece together a three second video to post just because That's crazy. I'm trying to figure out what's trending, um, cut something, oh, should I throw this VHS filter on it? No, no, I'll just do it for a split second. I'll do that. Oh, text up there, I'll do that. And then it just takes time yeah. to, to build yeah. anything. Sometimes you can just throw something up. It, it'll literally be something my camera roll and I'll throw it up and it'll go crazy. Other times I'll spend a full day on something. It's just, That's you just wild, don't know hey? the, the hours you put in. It's why it's hard to yeah. put value on that kind of stuff because if you tell someone you, you took three days to make a three second video for their company, do you charge them three days or you just charge them what you think they probably think well, I think it, it comes back know. to that that whole process of like if you create if you can create something quickly, yeah. But it would normally take someone else like eight hours. Yeah. Do you charge eight hours? Yeah. And then vice versa as well. Like I yeah. think 
I like the way I like to think about it is it's an end result. You're yeah. charging for an end result. And yeah. however long it takes you to get there, yeah. it's kind of irrelevant. Like yeah. that's on you then at that point as a creative it person. It is. And that, that's why you've got to find a happy medium, I guess. You can't charge them three days for a quick reel. So you've got to find how long would a normal person take to do this, you know. But it also depends on trends as well. As you know, TikTok and Reels have certain trends. Uh, one recently was people were cutting out photos and overlapping them in music. Yeah. That takes time. That's not like a, a 30 minute job. That takes, I think they've brought out apps now that can do that. Or there's just certain ones splicing things together that um, everyone's using three GoPro 360s right now, fashion ones with, um, and have your, your fisheye lens. And the cuts that they do and the transitions and stuff, it's like, that's a full day job doing that kind of stuff for a video that would go for five seconds, you know? But yeah, wild. It's, it's seeing, but if, if you're getting the, the return is worth it, that's what drives you, I think. If you're getting reposted, you know, thousands of likes, brands want you because you did that video, that's why those ones count too. Putting in the time yeah. for something you think has a lot of value, carries a lot of weight and people people want to book you because of that one video. I mean, I still, people still tell me about the first Jagger video I did and how much they love it and how much they wanted me to shoot their next video because of that particular video. People just- Wow, that's crazy. You know, one, yeah, one video can change it. One song can change anything. You know, it's just, you just need to, the right ears hear it and you know, it's it all can over. Go, yeah. That's awesome. It can blow up. Yeah. Well, man, thank you so much. That's no been worries. awesome. Like, I yeah. think there's like heaps of cool little insights that people are going to yeah. be able to like take away and no, just like kind of mull over because <laughs> it's, I think having these kind of conversations, mm. I don't think people really like think about this stuff before they get into it or they like, no. they will just, they'll find themselves like two or three years down the road and mm. it's like all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're kind of like committed to this, this process. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I really appreciate you coming on and no worries. thanks man, we'll, we'll, we'll get you on again. So just quickly, um, in the new year, like any kind of like, what, what are some of the like shows that you're gonna be playing? A few shows coming up. So I'm not sure when this drops, but I am playing one tomorrow on Friday night. Um, but then I've got um, a couple of gigs I'm playing at the new Focal House, which is Curtis Walker's new warehouse, yep. Burley Heads, 26th and the 29th. Um, and obviously the 31st New Year's party, warehouse party, private party I'm doing there, which yep. is a bit of a crew, which would be good. I'll be there. Um, and then Bali for a bit of a blowout birthday, which would yeah. be fun. I'm looking forward to that in January. An actual holiday, I think I'm gonna leave all my camera gear there and just well, try anyway, I'll probably yeah. take it. I can't see that. Yeah. Happening, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think there's a couple of shows happening in the new year in March, but only penciled in though. But. Okay, well, we'll tag, we're gonna tag you um, you in on this when we post it. So yeah. everyone will be checking it out. And awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Peter. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. No, no, that was good. <laughs>